Minnesota returns to Big Ten conference play this weekend as the Gophers travel to State College to face 14th ranked Penn State. In advance of that series, we are thrilled to be joined by Minnesota head coach Don Lucia on this edition of the Hockey Report. Don, how does the roster turnover and the transition this year compare to past years when you consider the amount of talent you guys lost on the back end specifically? Well, we lost a lot of kids. Uh, we lost our senior class, which was six or seven that played on a regular basis, and then our goaltender signed with Tampa, and then Mike Riley with uh, Minnesota Wild and Brady Shea with the New York Rangers. So uh, it was quite a bit of turnover. I, I remember we played Michigan here right before Christmas, and I looked at uh, the guys that were playing in that game versus the guys that played against them in the Big Ten Championship last spring, and we had uh, 10 different guys in, in our lineup than what played in that game a, a year last spring. And so it's been a transition. We knew it would be. I, I do think our team is improving, but we're not there yet. With all that youth, three of your top four scores are underclassmen, two are freshmen. What are the biggest advantages and challenges of coaching such a young nucleus? Well, just the, the ups and downs. I mean, the, the consistency factor is what we're struggling with right now. We knew it would be a little bit difficult in October. We start out 0-3, and then we start to climb back in and then have the opportunity to, to finish some games. There's been a, two different games this year where we've been ahead late, uh, given up a goal in the last minute, and then ended up losing in overtime. So the guys that played in those roles last year as seniors or the defensemen that have departed, they're gone, and we have new guys in those roles, and including a freshman goaltender. So uh, that's been some of the growing pains, and, and nothing that, that we didn't expect, but I think at this point we're a little disappointed that we don't have two or three more wins that could uh, really have a huge impact in our season. That freshman goaltender you mentioned, Eric Shearhorn, has been very solid. You take away that one game against Michigan, and he really has been a nice replacement thus far for Adam Wilcox. How would you describe his style and his skill set? Uh, very athletic uh, and very much a competitor. I think that, those are the two things that we do really like about him. Uh, Justin Johnson, our goaltender coach, has really worked with him over the course of the first half of the season just to, to quiet his game down. He reminds me a lot of Adam. Uh, as a freshman, Adam was uh, very athletic, uh, came out and challenged, and that was a big thing with us is that we had to kind of quiet his game down and, and keep him a little bit more compact and tight. And that's what Justin's working on with uh, Eric the same way. And uh, he's had a really nice freshman year. When you look at what he had to replace in, in Adam Wilcox, uh, the tremendous three-year career he had with us, those are big shoes to fill. And, and that was the biggest question mark coming in for us this year. And, and he's come in and given us a chance to win just about every night he's played. Coming off a runner-up finish at the Mariucci Classic, you lose in overtime in the championship to number seven, Harvard. What's your biggest takeaway from that tournament? Well, I think it... it shows that we're improving. It shows that we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the top teams in the country. I really like Harvard's team. Uh, they play a very skilled game. They're, they're quick. They can get up. Uh, but at the same time, just not being able to finish the game. I think that's the thing that was most disappointing for us, that you put yourself in a position, you're down late, you score a couple goals in the third to go ahead, and, and then you give up the late goal and, and make another mistake in overtime. But, you know, that, that's the growing pains that we're going through, and hopefully some of these lessons, like we had the first half, got us off to a good start within the Big Ten Conference. We know going to Penn State it won't be easy. Uh, they're a much improved team, but you hope some of these lessons are going to help us down the stretch. As you do get back into conference play to face Penn State, you face a team that right now ranks second in the nation in scoring per game. What's the early scouting report on the Nittany Lions? Well, they, they play a very relentless game. They shoot the puck from everywhere. So I've already told our goaltender, you better be ready because uh, when, as soon as they cross the blue line, they're going to be firing. And uh, the more he can kind of take whistles and, and uh, give us a restart in the defensive zone, probably the better. Uh, we're going to have to do a good job defending the blue paint because they attack it so well. Um, and then we're going to have to get the puck out of our zone. They, they are a very heavy forechecking team. We're going to have to play a, a, a good, smart game. We're going to have to have great puck support, especially in our own end. Uh, because uh, Penn State's been very good at home. They've scored a lot of goals, and we're not a real high-scoring team this year, so uh, we're not going to outscore them. We have to make sure we outdefend them. From a bit of a wider perspective, Don, anytime Big Ten hockey is discussed at a national level, the buzzword always seems to be expansion. How much discussion, how much involvement do the conference coaches have right now as it relates to that topic? Well, I mean, we've had discussions, but uh, again, it's it's above us. Uh, that's with the 
the athletic directors, the presidents of the universities, but I, I think it's something that we have to do. Uh, you know, you look at the, the six-team league has been great. Penn State's been a great addition to college hockey. They're selling out all their games, but uh, we need more teams in the conference, whether it's one or two we add, but ideally you'd like to get to at least eight. Uh, I think there's some Big Ten members that could um, – give hockey a go and be very successful at it, uh, yet nobody's uh, taken that leap of faith yet. Uh, and then there's some teams that have been playing hockey for a while that uh, maybe sit in our footprint that we should be looking to, but it sure would be nice to add uh, two more teams in a very short period of time so we could get to eight. Finally, Don, I haven't had a chance to chat with you since the league made a proposal which in essence takes a year of eligibility away from a player who starts college hockey more than two years after their anticipated high school graduation date. Call it the over 21 rule, if you like. What is your take on the proposal itself and some of the backlash that came from some other leagues? Well, I mean, there's nothing we can do about the backlash. I've been doing this for a long time. I go back to uh, when I was coaching even back in the 80s, and the rule used to state that if you turned 20, you lost a year of eligibility. And that wasn't fair because you had players that were playing on their junior teams, and they had to either play in the playoffs or, or quit their team uh, at a pivotal point, or they lost a year if they turned 20. And then we changed the rule to 21. Uh, now schools are getting skirting that issue by enrolling kids into college in January. And so they're coming in and turning 22 years old uh, as a freshman. And I'm just, I'm philosophically opposed to it. And it's interesting, I've had a number of parents come up to me and thank me because uh, uh, they don't see the point of why their sons have to play three years of juniors before they have to go to college. And uh, I'm just a proponent of uh, you play one or two years post high school, everybody gets the opportunity to play two and then get on with college. And it doesn't prevent anybody from coming to college. It, it just prevents them from having that fourth year of eligibility. Minnesota head coach Don Lucia. Don, as always, great to catch up. Best of luck as you guys hit the road this week and to face Penn State. Thank you.